Hello, my name is Sav, and this is another Open Soul video. Today we'll be talking about events. Uh, we'll be able to dispatch events in any part of our application, and these events will behave asynchronously. Uh, in future videos, we might see synchronous events, but today we'll be talking about asynchronous events. So let's see. So let's start by analyzing this diagram. This is the workflow of the login process of this application. First, the user opens the login page, submits the login form, then the system validates and authorizes user, then the system redirects the user to the admin page, and that's it. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to create a system of events where from this point in our application, we're going to dispatch an event that happens asynchronously. So we can do whatever in, that, in, in the event handler, and the system will still uh, happens, uh, runs in the same speed and performance. To start, let's first register a file where we'll keep the, the key of the events that we'll be dispatching. So constants of PHP. Okay. So that will be it. So now I prepared here for us three events, login event, logout event, login failed event. This is when the user successfully logging. This is when the user failed to login. And this is actually, this is when the user log out. And this is when the user failed to login. Okay. So that's it for now. Uh, we go and implement our events service. So here we, here, here we are, events. Uh, oops, here it is. Okay, now I have the event service. Let's start by adding a property called events. This events is going to be uh, where we register uh, events to be called, okay? Uh, to be executed. So this class here is going to be a singleton class. So we start by making the constructor uh, proprietary, like can be protector or private. And the, we have a method get instance where we grab a static variable and we put the instance there and we serve that variable with an instance if that exists. If it, that doesn't exist yet, we just create a new instance. Okay. So that's it. Now we add a method for us to add an event. I'm adding as a static because we are always grabbing the same instance. And, and then I want also a method to get the events. Uh, let's go back a little bit uh, to just see the format of these events. So basically the format of these events is, is like this event key as the key of the variable is a dictionary, right? And here we have a callable array. And is a callable array. It's not prop actually a callable right now, it's a function, but I'm going to leave as a callable at this moment. And is a is a an array of it. Uh, and the reason why we are adding as an array is because we want to make it possible for us to add multiple handlers for a single event. So uh, in case further in the world you want to add other handlers to organize better your application, you can. You just you don't need to have only one handler for that. Okay. So this is just for flexibility and scalability. So now we have the get events. Now we need a method for us to dispatch those events. Here it is. Uh, this is uh, going to be built further in the world still, but at this moment, we just have to know that uh, we are going to grab some swall table and we are going to register something. So when we dispatch an event, what we are actually doing is we are keeping in a swall table the information of the event that will be used by the timer to proceed and execute whatever callable is registered for that event. Okay, so let's see now. Uh, how to add that to our bootstrap. In our bootstrap, we are going to do two things at this moment. And let's see. So in the, in the bootstrap of our application, which is right here in the app start, 
we will add first our constants. So the constants file that we added right here, we're going to add. So add from the root is inside source, right? Right here. And then we will we'll be starting by registering our events. So this method doesn't exist yet. Let's add it. That's it. So what are we doing here? We are grabbing the, the container, the dependency injection container, we're passing in, and we are, the, we are adding uh, a handler to this event. So the handler is this function here. So we are assuming that this is a JSON because we are JSON decoding the data. And, and we are assuming that this uh, array will have the user ID. We're not actually uh, handling this. So if you pass something that doesn't have the user ID, it's going to be to throw like a big exception right now. Uh, we're not too worried, but let's just add. And now that I have the user, I just go there with the container and log using the logger that we have available. The, which user successfully logged in. So this is it. We register our event. Uh, now we are going to add on our server, which is the place that I chose to, uh, to register our SWOL table and, and execute the timer. And what's happening here is that I'm creating the SWOL table. So let's import the SWOL table. And the SWOL table has event key and event data, which is the data that I'm passing every time I dispatch that event by the key. Okay, and I'm making this table available through across the application through the container. So anytime you need, just do this. Right now I don't I'm not using like this, but you can. That's important aspect of it. Now I'm adding the timer, the swell timer, which is this right here. And and here I'm uh, getting all the events available, registered, right? And I'm looping on it. So every time, actually, I'm not, I'm not looping here, I'm looping in the table. So this is how you loop in the records on soul table. You can loop as if it was an array. So I'm going to loop on all the registered events and I'm going to see if there is a dispatched event on it. If there is, what I'm going to do is I'm going to loop and run the handler for, for each dispatched event. And then I'm going to delete that record, okay? So that's how we are going to be handling the asynchronous events. So now, if we go to the place where this, the user successfully log in, we can go there and dispatch. I'm going to just show how to dispatch this event and in the repository, you'll have all the other events available for you to check. Okay, so here it is. I'm going to dispatch this event when the user successfully logging and I'm going to pass the user ID. As you saw there, I'm going to parse the JSON. I'm going to find the user and display the username, okay? That's what I'm doing. So let's start our application and see, because I'm expecting to see the user successful logging right here in the logs. So let's go there and successfully log in. That's it. We're well, successfully logging and the user and the event got dispatched. And to show that this is happening asynchronous, let's add a sleep function right here, waiting two seconds before it executes. So let's just restart. Let's go back to the login and successfully login again. Here it is. I already logged in two seconds after I have the log coming in. Okay. So this is completely asynchronous. This is how Swole works and we got it. Uh, okay, uh, I hope you enjoy. See you in the next video.